as the forces broke up. The strong nuclear force split apart from the electroweak force, becoming two different manifestations of this previously unified force. If a seemingly unified force could split in two, can it happen again with gravity? This terrifying possibility can be represented with a simple coin. A quarter has two faces, but if you impart energy to the coin by spinning it, the two faces seem to merge. You see neither heads nor tails distinctly. Now, eventually, that quarter loses energy and it lands either heads or tails, two distinct outcomes, neither of which looked like the spherically symmetric spinning quarter. In the same way, the symmetric gravity right now could someday split into two different aspects. Each of these two new forces would behave in a way distinct from the current behavior of gravity. Everything that's held together by gravity would disintegrate. And that would spell doom for us on Earth. Human bodies would remain intact because they're held together by electromagnetic forces, not gravity. But everybody on Earth would fly up to suffocate in space, while the Earth itself would come unbound, no longer held together by gravity. Jupiter and the other gas giants would dissipate. The Sun, whose gravity once spun the planets like balls on strings, would fly to pieces. Most of the Sun is all big hot ball of gas anyway, and it's held there by its own gravity. So what you would probably see is a star drift away rather quickly. The Sun wouldn't be held together, the galaxy wouldn't be held together, everything would be drifting apart. The Earth would be just random particles in a small corner of a universe of cosmic dust. That would be a pretty amazing ending. Of course, there is another way to take the Earth apart. Blow it up. Easy? Of course not. But there is a way create an antimatter devastation bomb of some sort. That's the number three way to destroy the Earth. Antimatter annihilation. And it's the first choice of astrophysicist Clifford Johnson. The antimatter idea just has a certain beauty to it. It's just the sheer terrible beauty of a really dramatic explosion from the inside. Antimatter is just like matter, only the opposite. And matter and antimatter destroy each other in a blaze of glory. So basically, this is Einstein's equals mc squared in action. You can take this matter and antimatter and combine it together and release pure energy. Just one pound of antimatter, annihilating one pound of matter, would pack 44 megatons of explosive punch, as much force as a thermonuclear bomb. But destroying the Earth would take a lot more. According to some estimates, you'd need at least a hundred trillion tons of antimatter. So, thinking of the size of the stadium, we would have to fill millions of stadiums with antimatter before it could interact with the matter on Earth to actually release enough energy to unbind it. But if you really want to try, there's an antimatter factory just 93 million miles away. When enough magnetic energy builds up in the nuclear furnace of the sun, it's released in an explosive solar flare. A big flare can generate as much as two pounds of antimatter. Contact with matter destroys the antimatter almost instantaneously, 
but there are ways of containing it. You can suspend it without touching it by using uh, various kinds of electric and magnetic fields. So you can keep a quantity of antimatter suspended indefinitely. So all you have to do is collect and store antimatter from around 100 quadrillion solar flares. Once you've got your 100 trillion tons of antimatter, just transport it to Earth and turn off the electromagnetic field so it can come in contact with normal matter. Maybe put it at the center of the Earth somehow and then let it do its thing. It'll explode outward and simply rip everything apart. But while an antimatter explosion would be instantaneous, collecting all that antimatter would take tens of billions of years. We only have so many solar flares a year. It would take many, many, many years to capture and store enough antimatter to really create a very appreciable sized bomb. Physicists know that antimatter isn't the only type of particle that could liquidate the planet. The number two way to destroy the Earth is a case of destruction through transformation, transformed by strange matter. This is big trouble that starts at a tiny level, smaller than protons and neutrons, in the weird world of quarks. Particles with names like up, down, and strange. Try not to get hung up too much on the semantics of what a quark is. You might want to say it's a sub-subatomic particle, the thing that makes up the other things. Some physicists theorize that an equal number of up, down, and strange quarks would make up a strangelet, a particle of something called strange matter. What makes it so strange is that it might change the physical nature of whatever it touches. Like ice cooling the water around it, only far more extreme. They like to turn other things into strange things. They like it all to be strange. Imagine everything on Earth and the Earth itself turning to inorganic mush all because of a subatomic strangelet. Fortunately, there aren't any strangelets on Earth. But inside the collapsed suns called neutron stars, it might be possible for the immense gravity to press together up, down, and strange quarks into strange matter. We are getting very close to the answer. We might know in the next few years. So if you did find a microscopic lump of strange matter in a neutron star, somehow got it back to Earth and dropped it, say, on the top of the Empire State Building, what would happen? A, nothing, or B. All these strange quarks could change the state of matter here on Earth. A chain reaction has begun. The strangelets are reacting with ordinary matter. The Earth is changing. But into what? 